If you ask a parent, they might call it intuitive. If you ask a musician, they might call it inspiring. To a doctor, it's groundbreaking. To a CEO, it's powerful. To a teacher, it's the future. If you ask a child, she might call it magic. And if you asked us, we'd say it's just getting started. And so over the past two days, and the two sessions have been What are we doing here? <laughs> 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 very <laughs>
So the system is modular. Based on the permissions you have in the functional role organization, you will see only what pertains to what your role requires. You don't need to see what is not your role. You only experience and work with the ones which are your role. Like how somebody's role is only the right. Where is it? Or is it wrong? So I'm taking you open the door. Yeah, I just have a call. You should have no call comes. No, you should have no call comes here. Yes. <laughs> so let's continue. Good. So you have different functional roles. Financial accounting will be better like cash on hand, accounts receivable, customer credit and revenue. Anybody in finance? Let me see. see your Some of the gold or platinum members 
they are they instead of them getting maybe uh, 50 kilos on a time that they can get triple of what the person has. He's getting what he's getting from first class already, and he's getting an extra weight of course he's also a maximum on gold medal. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So by how would they be able to do it? They're able to do it because they're able to stay collect the data and study them and then be able to evaluate what type of data they have, what type of client you are. So in the, managing this type of information in uh, an enterprise platform, sometimes some of the enterprise platforms do not only really help the internal operation, but also extend to the external operation. What I mean is that it goes on to connect with suppliers. So you can have upstream supply chain where a firm is connecting to its supplier and the supplier supplies. And then you can have downstream supply supply to where a firm is connecting to its distributors and then the other retailers who end up putting the product on the shelf. Example is Nike ID. I hope you remember when we looked at Nike ID. Now let's look at Nike's system. <coughs> on one side, the firm then goes up. On one side here, this is where Nike is. So there's a the downstream is here, where you have the distributor, retailer, and what the customer. And then these are the contract supply and contract supply. Contract supply, I hope you understand what you're going to do. You give a specific task, supply basis, supply maybe so, supply color, supply something in particular. And you know supplies may also rely on other supplies. Yes. To also be able to produce what they are supplying to you. So you have got those. Supplier supplies on one and on the other side. Now, what Nike does is that it has to have a system to be able to integrate with everybody here and then integrate with everybody here. So that if a customer is this place and he got places and all that, the information goes downstream. And guess what? Nike initially what? Notifies everybody who should produce this, who should supply this. It all depends on the type of supply chain system we have. Some people like to stock and sell. So they come and put it on the shelf. Others do like to respond to as and when basis. So the order comes and then they want to respond to it. So let us look at it. Information and supply in the supply chain management helps to avoid operational, you know, operational um, inefficiencies. So it helps to reduce the contact up goes down from 25 percent of the operational waste. Uh, expenses if only you are integrating the system very well and if only you are supplying the good information. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Some websites, the problem they have is that they don't have um, they don't have uh, security enough security mechanisms to auto filter and assess the information that is coming in. So people can go and create junk accounts. Don't buy it, they just come into okay, name, KB, then email, KB at email.com. And then and they, if you are working in any position like that, sometimes you see that you collect junk mail and it just comes in. You don't fulfill orders, you don't do it, and sometimes you just spam it. And you fill, so if you look at your customer database and you get a oh, we have 80 customers in our database. You look at them who have them, them which of them have uh, real clients. And sometimes you can read Kofike, some of the days are never complete. The email is never complete. And sometimes somebody too can register officially, not official or yeah, the correct details, but you don't give all this information. So you don't have the complete information on that particular lead. For example, if I log in, hey, you can be asking me the phone number, me, I don't always put my right number there. So if there's any challenge I have a problem or the customer they want to follow up on any issue. Like I I, I started trying to buy something, they, they, it's a long time to send the site. They either send me email or what from right the email the phone number is wrong, the call doesn't go through. Hope you understand what I'm trying to say. And if the email to you is wrong, if they send the email, you never, you never reach it. So you can have a good system, but it all depends on when the right information is put into it. Then you have also just the entire strategy. Sometimes some people, because of the sound company, because of the fact that they are responding to what uh, clients are asking for, they have this just the entire strategy where all the components arrive at the time to produce the product to a particular client. And others also do otherwise, I'll show you later. Then you also have the um, safety stuff. Uh, the ability that you can have flexibility. When you have everything intact, in the sense that you are producing everything into forecasted 
um, needs. Sometimes you can have things on the shelf and they will, not, they will be there for three months. And that particular produce, um, product will never be bought. Because even changing parties and changing preferences of consumers can influence what they want. For example, recent, and I think recently I realized that almost all the mobile phone companies are now selling the data bundles with phones. How can some of that is? So if you go to be a high end phone, most of them went to for a high end phone like Galaxy Tabs. And they were selling to you out of their office. And they added the bundle and they sell it to you around 1,200. But the phone itself is about 900 dollars. Now churches are, they are also selling what? The, the dongles, the USB dongles you are buying. Somebody to say that, why would I just buy a data card? If I have a phone already, I can activate it. Use my SIM card on the phone, so I don't need to be a bank account to run. So if you have bought a lot of uh, Galaxy tabs, just to sell the bundle of uh, accounts, and you don't want to sell them as the tab alone, because not none of the companies want to sell the tab alone. They always want to sell it with an account. But if you go to Telefonica and the other ones, you can buy it as just a phone. And many consumers, as of this time, have got one year and an allowed already. So why would they want to buy a bundle package which costs maybe 200 or 250 extra? Then rather take one which is not bundled, you can use the same card, put it inside and use it. Or let the person doesn't want to use such a big phone as a phone. How we are selling the same. But just want to use it as just an internet device. So a number of them were confused about what to do. They will put out there product in the market and it doesn't sell as fast as it can it will sell. And even in marketing to other uh, 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 marketing to the customers out there, we have a challenge. You, are, you go to a customer, the customer says, oh, my, uh, my technical phone can do the internet already. So why would you want to invest 900 or 1,200 dollars in this? And the technical phones, some of them are as high as 500 and as low as. Where is the low? What's the cheapest technical phone? 70. 70. 70. 70. 70. 70. 70. 70. The one that can do Skype and can do chatting starts from about, I think, uh, 700 Ghana gold. There was one that was 100 Ghana deals and about oh, 150 Ghana cities. And we were selling, it used to have a flip. And it came like in a case um, and you can open it like this and then you can use it. It was a double SIM phone. And you're doing almost everything that I was doing. By China. <laughs> oh, but some of them, the battery life are, are better now. It doesn't like the India ones. But when you have competing products in the marketplace, you always have to think of yourself, think about how if you are going to bundle products, are you still going to get a value out of it? Now, one thing I want to discuss right now is the what we call the boom wave effect. Now the boom wave effect is when you start putting more information as I said earlier. In the value chain process, what does it do to the value chain process? What you start what are happening is if inaccurate information is collected at this end, everything that happens here will not be accurate. How we are sorry to say if inaccurate information is collected on the customer and is put by the retailer, the retailer sends a distributor, and you don't have you go to the manufacturer, you can produce the product and the product comes in more what you want. It, or it's not good for them. And sometimes it, it, it can easily happen because of the fact that people will mix up information. You may pick information about a customer. And the same question, especially when you are dealing with IDs, the customer registers from uh, this particular, let's say this house has a let's say this is a home. And there are about three people living there. If all of us register on the same platform and we need the same post um, like postcode or delivery address and we order similar products, if you don't take care and the customer IDs are not taken into consideration, tied to the, um, the individual product you are ordering and then where you live, you may have products that may come to you, that may it will come to the right house, but it might not be yours. Just because one part of the information was wrong. And it can cause a lot of problems for them. 
Sometimes it can happen with very large platforms, especially those who do high-level customization. There was a time that the Vestros, the jeans manufacturer, came up with a platform where you can actually design your jeans and then purchase it. So you go on, and you choose the kind of the jeans you want, the weight size, and then um, then the rest of the jeans you want. However, in the US and the UK, there are different types of jeans. There are regular, there are straight cuts, there are the good cuts. And if you don't understand these things, you can choose something which is regular. Even the shirts, they are got regular, they are got and they are slim fits. If you don't know these things and appreciate them very well, you may see a 42 size must slim fit, and it will, you can wear it like an open on your tie. I hope you understand what I'm saying. You guys know about it a lot. And even the ladies, there's high waisted and the rest, low waisted. I don't know the rest, so you can explain to me. Yeah, but what I'm trying to point out is that if you get an inaccurate information, especially in the fashion world, you may not have the right goods. Now, I'm going to show you an example of a Ghanaian firm that tried to do, develop a very simple um, supply chain management system, which was combining from the customer back to production. Remember, I was talking to you the other time about a fashion company that was trying to sell online. Yeah. Now, this is um, less than fashion and garments. Yeah, I think this had to be area there. Where they are not, 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 is it not legal hospital? This one where it is highways or the new route that we used to go to Madina. On that route, you find it. Now, in around 2000 and 2005, 2004, they were doing a particular business where they were transacting with a shop in um, a black American shop in the US. The black American person came down to establish um, a business with them that they would like to order to, um, Ghanaian or African made clothes and sell to the US for them. So before they could do it, they had to do a small market analysis. They, came, um, they went there and did a small fashion show in Baltimore so that they can actually introduce what the brand, which is something very good that everybody will do when they are introducing them. And we did for what the Africans who are there, so the Nigerians and the Black Americans and the few other Ghanaians who are there came for the fashion show. Beyond that, they came down and the, the lady who was managing the firm there was an IT instructor, but she had a shop that she wanted to run and sell, she had to do something on the side, like how everybody does something on the side. What do you do on the side? We <laughs> <laughs> <He> sell gas. <laughs> or we sell that. <laughs> Are sold actually to um, um, clients when they come and buy. The people in the test are not sold. You pay for the service fee and all that. The people in the test are for easy. It's a property of easy. So, when you come for the amount you pay are for. So, and how much is it? Uh, yeah. no, I think it's at least <laughs> 380 and it's for a single page. Oh, I thought it was 900. Oh, no, no, no. It's 90, rather. Yeah. Oh, you see, I had it. I can talk to you. 900, no, no, no. I'm going to say 900, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll pray to the guy who says that I think it's sold at 90. Yeah. But they'll come and give it to you at 10. Okay. Wow. So, <laughs> yes. That's I don't want to choose how much. That's the other side. The man is. No, no, no. There's only some other side. The same guy who goes to the office says there's none available. The boss wears their homes. The guy who goes to the office. Oh, yeah. That's it. So, so, this, so this lady was doing this on the side. Before they could begin the relationship, how can you go sell fashion clothes, um, African fashion in the US, and you want to do bespoke, that means a custom for this? The only way you can do that is that the person has to be able to choose what the color of the material wants, the design wants, the fabric design itself. Secondly, to, you should be able to uh, take the measurements of the person and then send it to whoever is sewing in Ghana to sew it. So they came up with this a number of charts to, su to support the woman's business. One of the charts was this customer and 
information database. It was just a piece of paper that they give to you to download from the website of the IT instructor company. And you could actually say customer uh, appropriate. And what it is that they give detailed information how to take the measurements. First, they told the one how to take the measurements because some people need to walk into a shop. And you got and for others, they explain that if you are taking it there, what you should do, that's what I've done there. If you are taking the upper part, where you should start from. And you do all this, this is a, 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 a form that you could either download or if you call the woman in the US, she could email it to you and you, you pick your own you make it something in the design. So you are giving the customer an opportunity to what? Provide accurate details of what he is on himself. Then they went on to this one, choice of fabric. So the type of fabric that is there, there are different shades, you choose it. But listen is a garment that fabric, they produce the garment itself. They can produce the garment right in the, I think some time ago they did the uh, MPP and then you see the same for them. I actually saw it in the office. So, yeah. And those are wearers, the design, yeah. So you can see they can print it on the cloth for you, whichever uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the factors work out that you can do it in the stuff. Then you can actually choose the chop, choice of design. The choice of fabric and color is different from the choice of design, like the uh, grass symbol, whichever, whatever symbol, elephant or uh, whatever it is that you want. Umbrella, okay. Elephant or the umbrella. Who is the umbrella? And this is the English practice. What is that? 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 What is Blow it up and put it on the fabric for you. The last was the choice of art style, like one that you want, the boom, or a uh, slit, or top, instead of top, whichever one you want. They had a complete style set, so, but they had codes for them, so you choose which code. Now, the, what, they, what they're trying to do is that they pick art from their catalog and try to design something like that. So that the woman who is outside can actually get accurate details and then send the information down. For them to be able to watch. So when everything is finished, this is where you create the you create an invoice for this is everything was paper plus internet and it's quite interesting. They do this, they fill it and then they scan it and send it down. This is somewhere around 2005. Somebody will say that, oh at that time you can't buy it online, but this is what the company was doing in Ghana with another partner in the US. So the partner, and you can see how detailed it is. This, I didn't create this, they gave me this themselves. Item description, fabric type, color. Remember we saw it there. Screen, that's like what uh, the design that you want. And then the unit price and then the quantity. Then you do the kind of calculations for the fact. Special, if you have some print, and I want it, I want the big arm, you know the woman, some of them want the big arm, I can't So sometimes they will design those ones to attach to that one. The method of payment, check cash or money order, but that was to the company in the US. And then the, the, the deposit that I think is a, I think 40 or 30 percent deposit that is required. Right? And then the returns, shipping is also captured into it. Very interesting information system without having all the adversities that it, you have to do on today's system. This is very different from what Nike is doing, but they were doing that. Now at the end of the day, they will send the information down to that email to the company in Ghana. And the person had an account with um this is an account with African online. So they set up internet in their house and they could actually capture the information and then print. But to be able to make this um, establish this business, she he um, the owner told me that see black Americans are ready to to trust. They come and promise you that they'll bring this business, they'll bring this and it will go and it will never come. So she made a woman um, deposit two thousand dollars in Ghana. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. And you, when you start bringing the orders and we, we ship it, then we start deducting from it up to 2000 So always in the beginning of the year, before the business starts, you send $2,000. And now she, the onus is on her to what? 
do her business to get more than the 2,000, which is actually sometimes quite good. So somehow, you make the other person, the retailer, come and do a deposit. And then goes, make, picks the police award, goes and pick the items and go and sell them. But she has to come, when she gets the details, sells it now, and then they will use um, FedEx to send it back up there. And you know, one of the challenges they had is after 9 11 issue, all the pricing and then the customer, uh, the custom regulation became very scrutinized. And it actually affected the ability for them to send more in a month. But in a year, they could do about 10 shipping, ship, um, shipping, um, Shipments for them, and what was interesting is that uh, they were using the airlines, and sometimes they were using um, some of the the courier like DHL and then FedEx. Um, that was the business, and every day they made ten thousand dollars from the league. So they did it for five years, two thousand to two thousand seven. Now, about 2007, the lady said that she wanted to expand another account to Ghana and then talk to more people and buy in bulk of things, which they didn't want to uh, get into it because they realized that that was a little bit risky. Because of the Americans and their science, the standardization is different. Now, when you are going to do things online when you are in a business in which mass customization is not working, it's not working. For example, our what we call medium here, may not be what the American may call medium. And especially if you are using sizing charts in the US and comparing them to sizing charts in the UK. And even the US and the UK, the sizing charts have to uh, be reviewed currently because of the fact that people's eating and lifestyle patterns have changed. Most of the sizing charts, as of about 2008, I remember I was doing my PhD, there was a lady who was doing a PhD on sizing charts in the UK. And what she was trying to study on how sizing charts have changed currently now as compared to the 60s, the last time they did it. Because the last time they did it, they used to do a country survey, take size, and then do a, a, a statistical um, analysis and find out what's the average leg size, what's the average waist size, and what particular can you do, what's a 12, what is an 8. Now there is what, um, there is a set size 0, and then there is size 8. The woman, are you going to help me? Six, uh, size 0, size 6. Size 0 is like a penny. <laughs> but they are nice and Are you going to Yeah, not in Ghana. For the women's... Oh, you don't talk to them, I'm sorry. They size 0 to... Uh, it's, it's like the slipper is very thin and what you can see. It's very... It, it's one of the smallest size you can have. And they have been going down and down and down. I thought you most what have you told you the, the lowest was an eight. Oh yes, it's up to the one. But over size zero, what I know about size zero is what they have. It's quite a number of them are used on the runway. You don't see them as tax of size zero. In fact, I think the lowest I've seen would be tax is size six. Size six, no eight. Or petite. They have eight and they have four petites. That's below eight. I work in a small shop before, so I used to sell clothes. That's how I do about it. So don't ask me whether I am. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> anyway, but what I'm trying to point out is that um, you realize a very simple technology, email and then empty forms, filling them and just super. Build an, ex an excellent information platform or an excellent uh, customer relationship and supply chain management system. And all was integrated all but just by email. You took information and you give it to somebody outside there. What is quite surprising is that in Ghana, listen listen's website, you have any of these forms there. And I ask them the question of why is it that when the Ghanaian website you don't have but on the foreign partners website you have it? So Ghanaians like to shop by viewing, touching and feeling. And it's all about an experience. So we can't say it's looking at it. She's telling you about the fact that, oh, did you see what Joyce I was wearing yesterday? And all this conversation makes it very social. So buying clothes is a social relationship in Ghana. A more than um, um, kind of impersonal relationship which is happening in the US. You really want to know your sisters. How can someone try to say you have a kind of a partnership with her and she knows what you want? It's just the same as the women and their hairdressers. The same relationship with what they build here. So you can actually translate that onto the internet. 
The only thing I can do, what they try to do on the internet was to have different clothes and have clothes. You know, so you come and see like maybe this type of particular design. Then you look at um, the, the fabric you want and then they sew it for you. And even in the shop that they had in their, in their office in East Le uh, North Legon, what they have is they saw a, very, a few number of clothes just ready for sale. But there are very few, just in case if somebody comes to go for a party in the evening. And, he, and even that, people buy it and ask for a trade sheet just in the shop for it, for it to be done for them. It's, very, it's, quite, sound, it's, it's quite often that, um, quite often, or, or per chance that you may find that everything that you do and select in the shop fits you perfectly. But it's a very simple and interesting platform they built. If I was telling you to do the same thing for another company in Ghana, you think you need all the other systems to be able to be like what Nike has. But that's what a system like that has done. Now that with this, with this platform, we can see two types of uh, integrations. First of all, there is an intranet that is helping communication internally. Yes, an intern, and, and they are built just based on email. <coughs> an email relationship between them and who? The client who is outside. And an email relationship between the internal operations of the firm. Like the MD and the wife who does the design and then the, um, the shopping floor who does the production. So they have a, a very an internal health coordination of information and internal supply chain processes. Then they have an extra net that is dealing with the partner outside. For example, listing and then um, elements for whichever firm is outside in the US, in Baltimore. And that is where they exchange the information. So we have two systems are found in this supply chain platform. The internet that is helping to manage internal operations and internal, internal exchange of information. And then the extranet that is dealing with the firm and its other business partners, whether it is the trading partners who are distributing or the trading partners who are supplying other supplies to them. <coughs> One thing I realized about this thing is that they were also buying part of their fabrics from uh, Bangladesh and India and other countries. So the, the lady frequently travels to these countries to buy from there and bring them in more before they start doing their printing on them. Now, the only way they can do that is also establish two email partners in Bangladesh and other countries so that they can go and shop there and bring them. To Ghana. So a, a, a very simple application like this is working based on email. But if you look at what we're trying to explore, something like this for Nike is more complex than what we saw in this. But all of them are showing you how information systems is integrating information between the firm and the suppliers and the firm and the other trading partners like distributors. So in the supply chain, now we have discussed these things already, but I just want us to go back to them. We can see first of all there's a push-based model that a firm may produce and put on the marketplace based on forecasting. So you think about the fact that um, the last last year by this time we sold only 200 um, uh, copies of the phone or 200 uh, specific items in the UAC. So this year, what you are going to do is that you look at the schedule, look at your supply uh, and, and the supply and demand, and then forecast that maybe you will just produce 250. Give and take the changes in the marketplace. Now, but that is very, very dangerous or it's only just based on the fact that all the different supply, all the different outlets that you are using are ready to work. Now if you are in a country like Africa and the countries like Africa where during election years nothing is very certain. <laughs> uh, you are hoping that's what I'm trying to say. You produce the two and next year somebody was shocked was working because he was on one orientation of the political party. <laughs> By the next year if those two those those shops will fall out. What is going to happen to you? Your two fifty, you may have to find somebody else to sell it for you. And it happens quite often. People bring food from China, like sugar. Last time I remember a friend was telling me about the fact that a ship is coming with, with sugar from the US and from the US and other parts of the I think North America. And they want they are looking for people to come and buy them and sell them for them. 
In the first one, the manufacturer is what talking to supplies, get the supplies, and then what? Out of that, he, he produces and goes to the shop, shop floor. So the stock is based on forecast, and then the customer buys what's from the shop. For the pool based model, the customer is the one who starts the process, like what we're seeing in the night ID. Customer goes to retailer, retailer goes to distributor, manufacturer, and the supplier. So always, it's accurate information that makes the people who base on the website. Otherwise, if somebody puts a, for example, if I, I am ordering something on the um, listing system and I put in the wrong uh, sleeve size, by the time they finish their design and they get to the US, you should not have a sleeve and the address will be nice, but I cannot put my hand on it or it will not fit me very well. And sometimes, if you also have a very long delay between the customer other time and the time they think they deliver, the customers can move on. This happens on Amazon and other places around. The person orders it and we don't deliver the money in the week that. By the time they can come and they cancel it. Sometimes they cannot cancel, you can only cancel within, um, after two days to the time of delivery, maybe you cannot cancel. But within the first two or three days, you can cancel. When you have that time, customer, a customer decision, you may find a cheaper one and come back and, and cancel it. So you always have to make sure that if you're using the pool based model, your delivery time, your turnaround time is very, very short. Remember the time we were watching a video on, um, if you could remember, on Blue Now. He said they tried to do a three day turnaround on the book. You order and by Wednesday or Thursday you get it. Because we don't want you to have a lag time like some of our people do. You order it and say, oh, go ahead and come back to your man's time. And you can come in the month and you still have made mistakes in what you are actually doing. Okay, from there. So the pool-based model is sometimes